Thank you so much for joining us, Foundations, wherever you are joining us from, for our Love Everyone Always series. And I tell you what, this series is incredible. I can't think of a more timely series than Love Everyone Always right now. In the midst of a worldwide pandemic, in the midst of protest and racism and violence, and uh, hey, we even have the elections coming up this week. So I know Love Everyone always is very appropriate for what we're all going through at this time right now. And uh, it's been phenomenal to hear Pastor Carl a few weeks ago talk about Joseph, who went from the pit to the palace, how he had to choose forgiveness over bitterness, and how the love of Jesus flowed into Joseph and how he was able to love everyone always, even his own brothers. Then the next week, Pastor Marcus talked about Hey, how do we love everyone always? By looking, by loving, and by living it out with the everyday opportunities God brings to us. And last week, Pastor Steve banged it out of the park with, who is my neighbor? That is the everyone aspect. So again, today, as we get ready to wrap up this series, I'm excited to break down those three words because those three words that we have right here, love everyone always, Three simple words, only six syllables, but boy, in my life, is it hard to do. So please join me in a word of prayer as we get ready to dive into these three words. God, we love you, and thank you so much for the incredible, unconditional, no-strings-attached love that you have for all of us. And God, as we receive your love, may it fill us up and empower us this week to love everyone always. Thank you for every single group member. Thank you for every single group leader. And God, we're excited to see what you're going to do in Northern Colorado through those that are choosing to be filled up with you and love others. We pray these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. So when I look at this word love, I look at this word love, it, it reminds me of a time when I was in college and I was in the restroom, washed my hands, and I was getting a paper towel out of the dispenser and I saw these words written on the dispenser that said, I think I'm falling in love. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And uh, the next day, I'm a man of habit. I walked into the same restroom and washing my hands again and the paper towel dispenser and I saw how somebody crossed out some of those words and they said, Love is a choice. I'm like, wow, that is interesting how love is a choice. And when you look in the New Testament, the word love is mentioned over 1,540 times the word love. And you have everything from I really love that thing to hey, you're my brother, I love you. And then you have what's called the agape love. That's the love of Jesus. That's the love of no strings attached. That love is not based on feelings. That bait love is not based on I will love you if you love me back. That is the love where Jesus says, hey, love your enemies and reach out to those who can't even pay you back. And that's a love that I've been challenged with in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. I want to read this passage because this is the love that we're talking about here in northern Colorado. Let us love one another for love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we may live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfect in us. 
the gist of that whole passage is receiving God's love because God loved me first. A love not based on feelings, not based on did I deserve it or not, but an unconditional, agape, no strings attached love for who I am. God loved me that way. God loves you that way. And because he fills us up, because he fills us up, we are now able to choose to love the people. And um, the, the second word, though, in this phrase is not only love, but we have everyone. And again, Pastor Steve talked about that everyone is our neighbor, the person that God brings across our path. And it might not be the person we like. It might be the person that drives us nuts a little bit. It might be the person that has hurt us before. When I lived in South Bend, Indiana, and uh, we were near to the inner city of South Bend, um, there was an incredible picture of loving everyone always. Um, there was this youth group that we are part of, and it was a phenomenal to see all the different youth leaders come in and love all the different students. Because when these students were in the high school, they were actually enemies. But when they walked into the walls of the church, it's like the love of God overwhelmed them. We had gangs. We had people taking drugs. We had athletes. We had um, homeless. We had people that had it all. We had the academics. But taking all of these people inside the building and watching the leaders loving these people and loving every single one of them, it was amazing to see what God would do. And the third word, the third word is always. And I don't know about you, with, with this lawn sign in my yard, when I walk into my house every day, it almost becomes a mirror to me. It's like, Dan, do you really have that no strings attached, unconditional love? Dan, do you really, are you really able to choose to love everyone no matter what they think, no matter what they believe. And then Dan, what about the always factor? What about the always factor? Not just when it's convenient for me and when it fits into my schedule, but any time of day, whether I'm driving home or whether I'm just sitting at work and somebody walks in off the street and it's like an opportunity to have a conversation. And it's amazing. When I look at the life of Jesus throughout the gospels, many times Jesus had a place he was going but then he would be interrupted and he would stop to show the unconditional love to somebody always. There was even times where Jesus had interruptions to his interruptions, but he still stopped and took time to show the love of the Father to everyone always. So church, I just want to encourage you, who is God bringing into your path? Maybe it's somebody of a different minority, Maybe it's somebody within your own four walls of your house. Maybe it's somebody in extended family, somebody in the workplace. Again, as we enter into this crazy election week, maybe it's somebody that believes differently than you about candidates. But how do we truly love everyone always? You know what? A few years ago, I was with my daughter and we got a chance to tour Ethiopia with World Vision to see all the amazing work they do, how they transform communities, the sponsorship of kids, and how they show the love of Jesus to everyone always. And I remember my daughter and I, it was the last day of the trip and we're in the capital of Ethiopia and we were sitting in a pizza shop. And as we were sitting in a pizza shop, it was actually on a porch, and we saw homeless people walking by. We saw people leaning over the rail, wanting, begging for food. And uh, the director of our trip began to decompress with my daughter and I, and he says, you see all the need that's out there. It can be overwhelming, right? And we're like, yeah, it's overwhelming. How can I just make an impact? And he looked at me and my daughter, and he said, you know what? Do for one what you wish you could do for many. And that thought has locked into my brain. I might not be able to help everybody, but how can I take initiative and do for one what I wish I could do for many? And even right now with love everyone always, how can I love one the way perhaps I wish I could love everybody? Church, I love you. You are so deeply loved by God, and it's my hope and my prayer this week that he just fills you up so much with your love that it bubbles over, and as you go about this week, 
and you see, God, give me that love with no strings attached, the same love you gave for me. God, who's the everyone in my life today? I might know them, or they might be a total stranger. Who's the everyone in my life today? And God, how can I be ready 24-7 for a divine appointment to show others your love? Let's pray. God, I thank you for how you've just made your love free to each and every one of us as we accept it and let, us fill, and let it fill each and every one of us up. May we be ready this week to pour it out onto others. God, thank you for this time. Please bless our discussion and our time together. And we look forward to the many, many God stories of how you are working through your church, through your people in Northern Colorado. We pray these things in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Church, have a great time. Life groups, enjoy the rest of your discussion. And I'm excited to see next week how you get to go serve your community and show God's love.